What is up guys, DT Ninja here to bring you my Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory Episode 4 review on my own. Wow guys, this episode, wow, it hit me hard, it hit me hard. Now, as you guys know, I've read the novels and of course the manga as well, so I know the story but seeing it animated and seeing it all come, you know, together in this episode, it was heartbreaking. You know, when that scene at the end came, wow, seeing him completely in despair, losing everything, that was really sad. Um, but uh, that doesn't take away from the episode. The episode was really well done. Uh, I actually enjoyed the episode, but it was it was just very hard seeing it the first time. So, yeah, anyways, uh, I'm going to do my review a little different this week. Uh, instead of giving you guys critical scenes, I really want to give you guys a full review. Like, things that I liked, that I didn't like, and also things that I noticed that kind of gave, uh, you know, this episode a little bit more towards, you know improving the story because Gato did add some elements you know in this animated version that really pushed you know the story further uh, so yeah um, the first thing is I love the visuals okay now the visuals in this episode were really nice you know the animation is beautiful but the visuals were powerful now what I mean by that is like uh, towards the end, okay, when we see the, you know, the AS battle between Leonard and, you know, uh, Sosuke, we see, you know, him basically destroying him, but it's not like using a lot of words, we just see like this image of him being destroyed like in Kaname's mind, and it was just really powerful. Uh, other things like uh, Tokiwa Kyoko's uh, scene, you know, it wasn't a lot of, you know, dialogue between the two, but you could see, you know, that state of shock she was in. You could see, you know, the desperation on his face as he tried to, you know, disarm the bomb. You saw all of these. Um, yeah, and like I said, when we see Arbalest the first time when he's getting ready to leave for his mission, his eyes light up. And, you know, you see him with his, you know, the monomolecular knife uh, in his mouth. That was freaking badass. I loved it. So, like I said, the visuals were really nice, beautiful, powerful. They were powerful. Um, they followed the story very well. That's another thing I like. They followed the story very well. You can definitely tell Gato really spent some time and trying to push his story, you know, and improve it. Um, you really feel emotion, especially on the main character side. You really feel that emotion towards the end, and I think it's because of the powerful visuals that they show. Uh, it's also the reason, I think, that he chose to have Kaname be the one uh, to help him getting ready for the mission. So instead of knocking her out and silencing her, making sure she's safe, he basically has her with, you know, he has her with, he's with her, you can see, you know, uh, at the apartment, they're at this, you know, swimming pool, but they're together. And that was interesting, and I think that was one of the reasons, because towards the end, we see how they part ways and all that, so it's really, you know, heartbreaking. But at the same time, it was really well done. The emotions, you know, can really be felt uh, between the two, so really well done. Um, what I didn't like, okay, what I didn't like, the episode was not long enough, okay? Last episode, we didn't get a whole lot between... Uh, you know, Konami and Sosuke, so we thought that we'd get some of the mission, but we didn't. So this episode really pushes the mission forward, and, you know, it really rushes through it. Now, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. For what they did, it was really well done. Uh, but, yeah, you can definitely tell they kind of rushed some scenes. Uh, also, we didn't get a lot of dialogue, like I said, uh, in some scenes. But, like, the powerful visuals made up for it. So, like I said, uh, it was kind of rushed to a, to a point. But other than that, it was really well done. I enjoyed it. 
Uh, but yeah, it, you know, you can only do so much in 20, 20 plus minutes. So anyways, um, now things I noticed, things I noticed now, uh, Sosuke is fighting. You can tell on his mission right before, you know, he le right before he's about to go to school. Al has a premonition. Okay. Al has a premonition that things are going to change. Okay. He says, uh, please don't leave me here. Sagra, don't leave me here, Sergeant. And he says, why would you say something like that? And he's like, because I have a feeling that we're going to part ways soon. And what's great and interesting about this is the next moment he looks over and, you know, he kind of has this surprised look on his face and he sees these birds flying off in the distance. And they're not just flying, they're coming from the building that he just left. Okay, because they were on an apartment building and those birds are flying away. And now what's interesting about this, this is like symbolism saying that Chidori or Kaname, right? That's her last name, is going to be parting ways with Sosuke. It's like a bad premonition that something bad is going to happen and she's going to fly away just like the birds. Okay, so I really liked it, but it's also a prelude to what happens later. So that is something I noticed. Um, they, they captured that very well from the novel and the manga. Now, like I said, the visuals are very powerful. But also I noticed that, for instance, uh, the scene at the school with Kyoko Tokiwa, where she's you know strapped to the bomb, when Sosuke's there, and, you know, the very first thing she asks is, where's Kaname? What's going on? He, you know, he says she's safe, but that's pretty much all it was, you know? And I like how they had Kurama be the one to tell her that he's, a, you know, he's an assassin, you know, he's, you know, a hitman. You know, and he came to the school with forged documents. And so she's taking all this in in shock. You know, she's in this state of shock. But in the manga, in the novel, she kind of gets upset. You know, why did you leave me out of all this? Weren't we friends? And she even goes further because she, you know, her best friend, Kaname, did not tell her anything. So she's really upset. Who in the hell are you? We didn't really get that, okay? She's, she's in shock, yes. But she didn't have, like, that powerful voice like she did in the novel or the manga. Because you definitely can tell she's definitely upset. But here it's kind of like... Uh, I don't want to die without knowing anything. It's not like, I don't want to die without knowing anything. You know, it's, it's not as powerful. But like I said, the visuals really show that emotion, which I did like. So, but I said, the thing I noticed is that her voice was not as powerful as I felt it should have been because, I mean, she's about to die, right? So, or she feels like she's about to die, so, and also she's learning that her best friend is keeping secrets from her, you know, Sosuke's not who she said, who he says uh, he is, and, you know, all this is, you know, just coming all at once, so she's in the state of shock, I would think she would want to ask more, and, but they had to rush uh, the scene, so I can understand why they held back on that. Now, the next thing, Wraith is very skilled. Okay, Wraith, the character Wraith. We saw them in uh, the second raid, and we saw this this old man. Not not necessarily old, but it was a man. And now we see it's a woman. Okay, and she shows some serious skills, showing some judo moves, uh, blowing this dude's head off. I mean, this was awesome. So it's really great to see Wraith in action. Uh, and it also adds to Kyoko's state of shock because they're, she's right in front of them as she and uh, Sosuke basically disarm these guys and take them out, kill them right in front of her. So you get this state of shock again. Uh, so you get that kind of, wow, what is going on? Uh, I did like it. However, what I noticed is that Wraith stays... Uh, more composed, especially in serious situation. So, like, towards the end of this scene, uh, Sosuke uh, says, you know, I had fun times with you, Tokiwa. Uh, thank you. 
he doesn't apologize. That's another thing. He doesn't apologize, you know, for putting her in this situation. So as I said, uh, you know, there's a scene where Sosuke turns around and says to Tokiwa, uh, you know, there's been, uh, we've had good times together, thanks. But he doesn't apologize. And I feel after this, this is where bad things happen. You know, we see an explosion, this missile comes, and then things go to hell. Because after that, obviously, Tokiwa is seriously injured. Shrapnel goes right into her chest. And Sosuke has this moment where he's like, you know, he basically loses his nerve. Normally, he's calm and collected, like Wraith is. Like, in a serious situation, Wraith keeps her composure. But, you know, Sosuke's sitting there, and he's kind of, like, shocked. Seriously injured is Kaname's best friend, so he feels responsible. And this is a serious, serious uh, situation now. So now, he goes off, and he fights all these AS units. Now, these M9s that he fights. This is a great scene, by the way. Uh, great action. I, I absolutely love the, you know, the, the action of the AS battles. Uh, you know, Sosuke dominates these three units that Kurama has, you know, ordered uh, to, to take out Arbalest as well as Sosuke. Uh, and it, it's great to see. It's great to see in action. But these, uh, these units are actually the same units as Gowren. Gowren used that one of these units as well as uh, Gates. Now, I'm not sure if these are actually equipped with a Lambda driver. However, the unit itself uh, looks very similar. It looks very similar. And I'm going to share a photo here from uh, a couple of the episodes so you can see you know the the comparison between the two so as you guys can see uh, Sosuke is dominating in the battle and Kurama gets a phone call from Leonard right and he seems to you know he had failed his mission they really sped the battle up so you know there's a lot of material to cover uh, but I did like how they introduced Sabina. They actually have her in the episode. So that was nice to see, you know, the newer character from Amalgam. Uh, so we'll see her. She's going to be a pilot as well uh, in the upcoming, you know, uh, arcs. Uh, so that was great to see. And then we obviously get the introduction of Leonard coming down, you know, near the school. And he's going to fight Sosuke. So this is a pretty intense battle. And it's also a very emotional battle because it's very personal. It's very personal because he's directing it. Uh, it. You know, he's up. He is jealous of Sosuke and Kaname's relationship, and he wants her, uh, you know, to like him. Uh, so basically, he's gonna do whatever he can, and that means destroying him. So we see him in his Fowler unit, and he looks pretty, you know, he's dark, it's, it's black, uh, you know, it looks pretty cool, uh, but he basically destroys uh, Sosuke, you know, you can see Arbalest being destroyed piece by piece, and he's like, this is your last warning, this is your last warning, you know. Uh, you know, hand over Konami, and he's like, nah, I'm not doing that. This is my mission. And he's like, I hate people that that are like that. So he he basically goes further, and he goes and manipulates Konami. And as we know, uh, this manipulation is actually furthering the premonition she had of Sosuke getting seriously hurt and you know all these things are caused so he's going into her mind using telepathy she comes across uh, Tokiwa or her best friend Kyoko who's seriously injured she's not supposed to be there obviously but she sees her there uh, you know with with whatever it is, the shrapnel or whatever, in her chest. And so she's like, is she going to make it? And she's, it's really crazy scene because now she's breaking down. And that's when Leonard takes advantage of her. Right as she's starting to break down. She's like, you see him right now? I'll kill him. You know, and you can see it. It's like in her mind. So in a way, this was very, very heartbreaking because to her you know 
all of this is because she didn't go with him, right? She didn't go with him to begin with, so all these things are happening because of her. So she feels responsible and everything. But you can see Sosuke starting to break down. You know, Arbalis is destroyed completely. And then Kaname starts to, you know, talk to him back, you know. I'll go with you. I'll go with you. I'll even love you. So she goes even further, and obviously these aren't true, right? These aren't true. So it even makes uh, Leonard even more angry because he f wants those feelings to be for him, not, uh, you know, Sosuke. So we start to see him, and obviously you can see he just has his gun. He doesn't even have his, his unit anymore. It's been destroyed. But Kaname comes and blocks the path between the two of them, and this is where that heartbreaking scene is, where she says goodbye. Sayonara. Sayonara. She says, it's enough, as she goes with him. And what's crazy about this scene, she doesn't even turn around. This was crazy. She didn't turn around at all, so we don't even see her face. She's probably obviously crying. Uh, like I said, it's a heartbreaking scene. Uh, you can see Sosuke's broken. You can see at the end, he's like biting his lip like, my God, what the hell has just happened, you know? And he, he makes that promise, I'll bring you back, I promise, you know? But like that scene was just hard. It was hard to see animated, but I really thought they did it well. They did it well. But like I said, um, that scene was definitely... It was definitely powerful. It was a powerful scene. But what I noticed uh, else is that uh, Mithril, okay, Mithril uh, also has to, you know, flee. They have to kind of say goodbye to their, their headquarters. So there's a lot of farewells in this episode. Not only do they, you know, Mal comes to the rescue of Tessa. That's really great to see. Uh, we, we also saw, you know, Kurtz and Clouseau come in at the last second, seeing, you know, the Tuatha de Danan come out of the water with the, you know, the, the behemoth there, and they destroy it at the last second. That was really nice to see. And another thing, another farewell we see is, uh, Sosuke and uh, it's actually not face to face, but they're on the phone when he makes the request to, you know, evacuate the students with Hayashi Mizu and he's like, so this is goodbye. So you get these powerful goodbyes in this episode. So there were a lot of farewells. Uh, so it was a powerful, uh, you know, uh, sad and emotional episode. But anyways, uh, that's what I noticed in this episode. Like I said, there was some symbolism, you know, with, with the birds and how they're, you know, going away. They're, they're flying away. Kind of like, you know, Chittery leaving uh, with Leonard. Uh, and also how Mithril has to leave, you know, their home base behind and leave. You know, kind of in disgrace. But they did leave with you know, their key members, so that was good. Um, but yeah, those are things I noticed. Uh, there's one last thing. All right, guys, so the last thing I noticed was how Arbalus is shown completely destroyed, shattered, you know, his unit is, is in pieces, and Sosuke is bloody, and he's basically losing, you know, Kaname, he's losing his, you know, units from Mithril, because he doesn't know if they're alive or not. He's using, losing all of his classmates, because he's, he returns to school in disgrace, and he kind of explains everything, and he promises that he'll bring Kaname back, but at the same time, he's kind of like on his own. That's why they call it that episode. Uh, that's why it's the title it is. But you can start to see this symbolism being more Kaname's and Sosuke's relationship completely destroyed. Okay? Like Kaname's heart and how she finds out her best friend is completely, you know, seriously injured and how... Uh, you know, Leonard wanted to kill, you know, Sosuke, and it's just a lot of things culminate. But you can definitely tell that that's, that, that symbolism of Arbalest could be, 
you know, the relationship of Konami and Sosuke being torn apart by Leonard. So, I found that kind of interesting, but at the same time, it is sad, you know, it is sad to see that. Takes advantage of that situation uh, with telepathy and makes her see the scene of him trying to kill him, you know, trying to kill Sosuke. So, slowly, you know, their relationship is torn apart. So, in a way, that unit represents their, their bond together, you know, their relationship. And this all started from when he showed up at her apartment. It was slowly, slowly starting to divide. And in this episode, it went from here, here, and completely destroyed it, you know. But I really enjoyed the episode overall. It was great animation, powerful visuals. Overall, I kind of wish it was longer, you know, a lot of things happen. But other than that, it was a good episode. Um, I wish they would have shown uh, Sosuke using his Lambda Driver a little bit, but obviously he was torn uh, about, uh, you know, Konami and a lot of things. He just fought a hard battle, and, you know, out of nowhere, Leonard destroys his resolve. So, but yeah, other than that, I really enjoyed this episode. It was kind of heartbreaking to watch, but overall, it was a good episode. It was a good episode. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my review, and I probably will do a novel review of number eight, which is the next arc in Namsak. So definitely check that out. That'll be coming soon, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.